If you love videos about video editing setups, time-saving services, and awesome macOS features that help you crank out your vids even faster when you're out in the world and editing remotely, then skip this video now. You don't want any part of this incredibly valuable time and frustration saving video. Just stop it now. Stop watching. Wait, you're sticking around? Now I actually have to deliver the goods? Oh crap. Whether you're at a coffee shop kicking back at a bougie Airbnb in Maine or Utah or whatever, or living that van life and hunkering down in a blizzard with the wife and kids, you need a killer mobile video editing solution. And boy, do I have one for you. I'm talking MacBook Pros, iPads, and that old ass iPhone you keep telling yourself you need to list on eBay, but you just can't bring yourself to do it because you kind of think maybe you can use it as an iPod Touch. Maybe your kids can use it, but wait, you don't have kids. Uh, who the hell are we kidding? You're never going to use that old iPhone until now. More on that in a second. Let's first take a look at why you might want to expand your mobile editing setup to include an iPad and that old iPhone. But why do I need to use an old iPhone? Stop asking questions. This is my time. All right, so you're in town for business. You're here at the coffee shop in good old Omaha, Nebraska. One of your clients was speaking at a seminar and you documented it for them, but now you've got to get something out quick for social, but you've got a bunch of footage to go through and you're not on your normal desktop setup that has all of your monitors just the way you like them. And on your notebook, it can be a real pain to reduce Final Cut Pro down to the 3024 by 1964 pixels of your brand new M1 Pro MacBook Pro. The Final Cut Pro UI just ain't gonna fit. You need that browser are big and beautiful, ready for you to lay down some favorites and keywords. So what do you do? You can't haul around some second monitor. You can't toggle and resize and shift workspaces and all that. You've got to crank on this edit. You've got to chop that broccoli. Chopping broccoli. Duh, you've got your iPad with you and you've got the latest and greatest Mac OS on that sweet new notebook. So you suddenly remember that one vid I made all about how you can extend Final Cut Pro to your iPad using ding, 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 Sidecar. And now you've got your browser full screen on that some bitch and you can fly, fly through that edit and get it done. But what about that old ass iPhone? And then you remember that your good old buddy on the YouTube's old Matty O'Brien moi made a long, eh, yeah, very informative, but slightly cringy vid because, okay, let's face it. I didn't really know what I was doing quite yet with said YouTubes. Okay, I was learning, but I made a vid all about Stream Deck Mobile on my iPad and my hair looked kind of funny because I forgot to look in the mirror before I started filming, but who cares, right? I mean, it's just gonna be on the internet forever. Forever, oh God, no. <laughs> So then you suddenly remember all the nifty little buttons my iPad running Stream Deck Mobile had and how I talked about how much faster it made my workflow when it came to cutting down A-roll and switching angles and multicams. And then you realize that that's exactly what you need to do right now with the vid you need to crank out for your client. Now, this video is not sponsored by Elgato, nor am I an affiliate. Believe me, I tried. They ain't doing affiliate stuff right now, which is kind of a bummer because if they were, I'd be rich because I really pushed their product on you guys. Oh, well, wait, where were we? Oh yeah. So instead of letting the shame and embarrassment force you to keep that old ratty iPhone hidden in the depths of your camera bag, you decide to take it out. And finally, 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 after years of me berating you in video after video to just get on the Stream Deck mobile train and solve every single problem you've had in your entire life, including, but not limited to, not being able to time travel, you decide to install it, set it up, Ooh, but wait, how do you get all those cool icons like Matt has? My Stream Deck Mobile looks stupid without them. Well, my friends, there's a link in the description that's good for the next 10 days that gets you all of my Stream Deck icons for free. That's right, free. So give this dang video a like and subscribe if you aren't subscribed because sometimes I do cool like this and it helps you all out and we're all better editors and creators and people and stuff. So yeah, you know, like and subscribe. So Stream Deck Mobile's finally installed on that old iPhone, which you're using so you can keep your new iPhone free for phone calls from your client wondering, when's that vid gonna be ready? So you've got it all set up real nice. And I'll put a link down below to both my video and Elgato's video on how to do all that. Because if I did show you how to set it all up right now, it would take forever. And really, you should be thinking of this video as more 
of a kind of meet and greet for you, an editor who doesn't know anything about the glory and magical awe and wonder that is Stream Deck Mobile. And Stream Deck Mobile, an awesome app that doesn't know a damn thing about you because it's an app and apps are stupid. So why Stream Deck Mobile? Why pay? I think it's $2.99 per month to subscribe. Yes, another subscription, but why pay for something else on top of all the other subscriptions you have? Matt, it's too much. You pay it because it speeds up your workflow you actually get a return on your investment, more value than keeping that $2.99 per month in your bank account. You edit faster, you get through all the tough stuff like long, boring A-roll edits. You get through that stuff faster so you can focus on the fun stuff, the editing, the storytelling, the stuff that makes you lose track of time and come back to video editing over and over again. Shut up already, Matt. Just tell us what buttons you're using on your stream deck. All right, so across the top, I have buttons that launch apps that I use all the time, but one in particular, QuickTime, not only launches the app, but immediately brings up a new screen recording so I can choose the location where I want to store the screen recording and then just hit record. It's a shortcut and when I use it I feel like I'm able to stay in my flow a little easier. Now in the second row I use the first two buttons constantly. These buttons allow me to go backward and forward to cycle through the angles in my multicam. The first button cycles left, the second button cycles right. Now these buttons replace the complex default keyboard shortcut of command plus shift plus left or right arrow. These two buttons save me tons of time when I'm editing. Now the next button is for making compound clips. The keyboard shortcut for this is option G, which isn't terrible to do, but it's much easier to just reach over and press a single button to make a compound clip. The next button is for locating a clip from the timeline in the browser. This replaces the Shift F keyboard shortcut. I don't use this one as much, but it's nice to know it's there. And the last button is for activating the transform tool. So instead of Shift T, you just hit this button and the transform tool comes right up. I don't use this one too often because the Shift T keyboard shortcut is fairly easy to do quickly. The next two are my second most used shortcuts and they replace the trim start and trim end shortcuts of option plus right bracket and option plus left bracket. A lot of editors remap these shortcuts to keys right below their left or right hand. Personally, I prefer to have them mapped to my Stream Deck mobile, especially in this edit bay, because it's just a quick move from my trackpad to the iPad that's running Stream Deck mobile. I think no matter what, you should customize the shortcut to an easier keyboard shortcut, because if you're editing a lot of A-roll with talking heads, this keyboard shortcut is critical for editing fast. The next key drops a default title onto my timeline. My default title in FCP is basic title, and that allows me to get right to work on making my text overlays for my vid. The next shortcut is for good old Shift Z, which zooms out your timeline so that it fits perfectly in your timeline window. I usually use the trackpad gesture that allows for this, which is to double tap your trackpad with two fingers, but it's good to know it's there on the Stream Deck mobile if I need it. And last but not least, we've got a button for adding my default transition to a clip. For most of you, the default transition in Final Cut Pro is cross dissolve, but I use the slide transition constantly, so I changed mine to that. The only negative about this shortcut is that it puts the transition on both ends of the clips, and usually I only want it on one side. So I do use it, but not as much as I would if you could tell Final Cut to apply one transition when using that shortcut. To make using Stream Deck Mobile even easier, I use a little kickstand I snagged on Amazon to support the iPhone. I think this comes down to personal preference. You could certainly lay your iPhone flat on your desk and use it that way, similar to how you use your trackpad. And then would you just look at that? The edit's all done and ready for export, and your client's gonna be shocked that he's got vids for social within hours of speaking at the seminar. You're a hero, and you have Sidecar and Stream Deck Mobile to thank. Not your editing skills and talent and the 10 plus years of filmmaking you've got under your belt, and the thousands of dollars in student loans from college, and all the tears and sleepless nights wondering if every decision you've ever made in your life has been wrong. None of that. Just Sidecar and Stream Deck Mobile. Hey, what about hard drives? You're making a video about dream mobile editing setups, and there's nothing about a hard drive. You know what? Unless you're editing a feature length documentary or a feature film, you should really think about purchasing a large internal hard drive on that shiny new MacBook Pro so you don't have to lug around a damn external drive. <gasps> I know. Many of you are aghast at the idea of using the internal hard drive versus an external. But if you have a project with data that's, I don't know, 500 gigs or less, and you have a one terabyte or larger internal hard drive, why not take advantage of the incredible speeds and efficiency of that internal hard drive? Not to mention the savings you get with your battery power. Sure, if you haven't watched my video on how to keep your Final Cut Pro libraries as small as possible so you don't fill up your internal hard drive, and bring Mac OS to a grinding halt, then you might get into some trouble. But of course you watched my video, so you have nothing to worry about. You did watch it, right?
right? It's okay in 2022 to edit off the internal hard drive if you have the space. And you can finally forget about always having some external hard drive hanging off your laptop. Now look, if you're a ride or die external hard drive, that's fine. I hear you and it's okay. You do you, it, it's all good. But this is my ultimate mobile editing setup for 2022 vid. So I'm going no external hard drive. So that's my ultimate mobile editing setup for 2022. MacBook Pro with a big old internal SSD plus an iPad, and that old ass iPhone, and you are armed for bear against all client edits, YouTube vids, and social media content. Now I'll link to some recent vids you all should watch to learn more about Sidecar and Stream Deck Mobile. That's like your homework, okay? And, and who doesn't love homework? Teacher, teacher, you forgot to give us homework this weekend. <sighs> Now I know you guys know the drill. Like, subscribe, click the bell so you get notified next time I upload a video. And till the next one, I'll see you soon.